Hello there everybody and welcome to a somewhat eclectic and fairly laid back review of Sonic Mania Plus. I have already written a more complete review uh, which has been published on the website obsev.com which I write for regularly but I also wanted to do one that was a little bit more informal where I can just kind of chat uh, and where because the other review goes out to a largely um, more casual audience uh, this is one where I get I, I, I feel like I'm really dig into the the issues that uh that i love and the kind of slightly bother me about the game uh as in such as i as i start this i'd like to say that um because i knew that i was going to be reviewing this game professionally i knew that i couldn't approach it just as a fanboy and so as the game was uh, getting ready for a release i was really thinking to myself what are the problems with sonic mania like the the real genuine problems that I feel needed to be addressed in uh, an update and in an expansion, uh, such as the one that we got with Sonic Mania Plus. And as I thought about that, I felt like obviously the the, the my biggest complaint with the game is that it doesn't feature Amy Rose, and I've uh, got Bretton Strokes to bang on about that endlessly because I feel like that's an important issue that um, representation in games needs to be improved. But I'm aware that not everybody shares my passion for that particular subject. So as I was thinking, I felt like probably aside from that, the biggest issue that I have with Sonic Mania is that it lacks its own distinct style, its own flavor. It's, it it ha doesn't have its own identity. It's got a lot of fun levels and it's got a lot of great stuff. It pulls from all the other Sonic games, but because it's such a, a hodgepodge of ideas from all of the different 2D Sonic games, it doesn't have one unifying feel. Whereas I feel that if you look at each individual Genesis or Mega Drive title in the Sonic CD itself, each of these games feels distinct, feels unique. It has its own kind of theme, and uh, I'd, I'd love to, at one point in the future, go through this and actually analyze the different themes that are present in the Sonic games because they are very interesting. But I don't feel like that's present necessarily in Sonic Mania because it is such a, a remix of old ideas. There are good stuff in there, and I feel like the the starts of, of the seeds of, of an original unique game are present especially with the original levels that were made for the game but because it borrows so heavily from other titles i don't feel like it has its own unique identity um, i'm drawing tails by the way in case you can't tell this being the case as i went into sonic mania plus i was a little bit hesitant i wasn't necessarily certain if i was going to absolutely love it or if there was necessarily going to be enough new things there to make me want to come back to it again and again and again instead of just say playing through uh one of the genesis titles all the way from start to finish I have to say, the team making this game have done an absolutely stupendous job with the new expansion. Encore mode really adds that unique flavor, that thing that I was looking for. It does so in several ways. It, first off, uh, the palette swap, I feel, instantly gives everything a far fresher, more original feel. Like you're playing through familiar old levels, but they look different, they feel different. Just by changing the colors involved, you get a completely different sense form and a completely different sense of identity. Beyond that, I also feel like I think the really the, the best thing that Encore Mode has is the character switching. So instead of just picking one character and going through the entire game playing that character, in Encore Mode, you're constantly switching characters. So you're playing a Sonic one minute and then you get a, a, a special... Uh, you destroy a special TV and then you turn into... It makes no sense if you don't have the context. For people who have not played the game who might be watching this, I apologise. You might want to go and look up some footage because it would probably do a better job than explaining this, uh, trying to trying to describe it while, while also drawing. But um, basically, you start with Sonic. You're then able to switch out characters. You've got one backup character with you at all times. You're able to add additional characters through bonus stages and through picking them up through levels. And so you've got a roster of up to five characters that you can then switch through and, and kind of mix and match. And so you're constantly changing the way that you're playing. You're playing a Sonic, and so you're going very fast. Or then you switch to Ray, and you've got to try and balance out the kind of the the uh, flight mechanic, which can be a bit tricky. Uh, then you're mighty and you're relatively impervious and then your tails and you're flying around to find secret passages and then your knuckles and you're gliding across the level or climbing up walls like it constantly switches and it constantly changes and I think that's a fantastic way of doing something new with Sonic because it's more than just playing another game or playing a very similar game that, that feels like much of the old ones it does something different 
I do. I also really love the the new bonus stages. So there's a new bonus stage in the game, which is kind of based on pinball, and it introduces more shields into rotation, uh, and it introduces the ability to pick up these characters when you're playing in encore mode. And I think that's absolutely fantastic because it means that first off, these benefits are more easily available. The problem with having blue spheres. Uh, mini game for all bonus stages in the vanilla Sonic Mania is you just end up going through the motions for something that doesn't actually add to the gameplay. Whereas with this new uh, bonus stage, you play the bonus stage for a minute or two and you pick up a new shield or you pick up a new character to play as or you've you've added something else to the game. You've got more rings, you've got an extra life, I don't know. It's things like that. It just it um it means that there's a purpose for stopping and pausing and entering the bonus stage, which I don't feel was necessarily there in the original Mania. So it's it's great to see how Sonic Team, not Sonic Team, <laughs> almost the opposite of Sonic Team, it's great to see how Christian Whitehead and his team have gone through this game and looked at a lot of the negative feedback or the criticisms that people had of the original Sonic Mania and said, right, what can we do to make this different? How can we make this stand out? And how can we fix the issues that are present? I don't think that, sometimes I think that that's not quite enough of that like in encore mode i'd like for it to be easier to switch between your character roster but i also understand that putting limitations there means you're forced to play with characters that you don't like for example i'm not a fan of ray yet brand new character very interesting very cute design i love seeing him i mean not brand new but you know brand new to 2d sonic games of this uh, genre and, and yeah i just can't quite get to grips with his gliding mechanic. It reminds me too much of the hang glider from Sonic 2 on the Sega Master System, which I absolutely hated as a child and which I'm now vaguely passable at playing when I go back and revisit the game, which is relatively often. I, I'm just not a fan of that mechanic, and I know it's borrowing a lot from, say, Super Mario's uh, shield, not shield, his his cape in Super Mario World, but it just it doesn't quite work for me. Mighty, I love. I love that he's basically in easy mode for the game and that he's relatively impervious. Uh, I'm not concerned about it like being making the game easier. Like I'm a, a veteran Sonic fan. I've been playing these games for a very long time. I don't mind the game getting slightly easier because that doesn't mean it's any less fun. Because Sonic, let's be honest, has never been a particularly challenging platformer. It's not like Mario where you have three lives and then you're dead. Or um, you kind of you, you have a power-up and then you lose the power-up and suddenly the game gets significantly harder. With Sonic, you lose your rings. That's a shame. That means you've lost some of the bonus score that you were going to get at the end of the level uh, or a chance to gain an extra life if you'd got 100. But who cares? Pick up a few more rings, keep playing. It doesn't really matter. Like These aren't challenging games. And so when you kind of remove even more challenge from them, I don't think that that necessarily hurts it. In fact, I think it's actually more fun. It's, kind of, it's a lot of fun to play through as Mighty and just smash through everything and really not care about what's uh, coming your way. Uh, so basically to kind of to reiterate I feel like a lot of the stuff that's been added in Sonic Mania is really it elevates the game it makes it more enjoyable and it gives it that unique sense of identity it makes it feel like something beyond just uh, playing through Sonic 1 levels again and then instantly switching to Sonic 3 and then instantly switching to Sonic 2 you know it kind of there's a consistent flow to it now it all feels more unique I also like that now I'm playing it on the PlayStation 4 because I did have this. This is just a personal quibble. I did have it on my Surface Pro computer, which is what I use to do all the drawings for these videos uh, and making the videos. Uh, and it was always a bit of a pain to actually start up the game. I had to uh, deliberately start up Steam. I had to open the game. I had to wait for it to load. I had to connect my controller to the computer, which is a hit or miss process. It was a lot of, there was a lot of faff involved. And then if I wanted to get on the TV, I had to plug it into the TV separately with a, with a um, connecting cable that goes to HDMI. It was not particularly easy. Now, because I've got it on PlayStation 4, I just press the button on the controller. It turns on the machine and I'm playing instantly. And that's great because it means that I can just sit down and play for a level or just pick it up and go, which is how I used to play uh, the Mega Drive Sonics. I used it for a very long time. I had these older machines plugged in uh, to the TV next to the latest consoles. And nine times out of 10, if I was very just wanting something to pick up quickly, I would just pick up Sonic and play that for a few minutes. And now I can do that with Sonic Mania. Uh, which is really good, which makes the game feel more uh, accessible and I can play more of it. It also means that Baby Gamer has been seeing it a lot more. But we've got into a kind of uh, routine. There's my little tail. This is looking pretty good. Just going to do some colouring. Bear with me while I find my pens. So um, 
when I turned this on for the first time when I was playing it in front of Baby Gamer, she came over and she said, oh, look at that. And I said, look, it's a new character playing as Mighty. And she said, oh, cool. I like Amy. And I said, oh, okay. I'm sorry, but Amy's not in this game. And she says, oh. And then she kind of just wanders off and, and picks up her Disney princess dolls and starts playing with those instead. Like her interest in the game disappeared <laughs> the moment that Amy was not on screen. Um, and I think that that's telling because I feel like it reflects her need for representation. And if anybody wonders why I've banged the Amy drum so hard in trying to get Amy included in this game or trying to let the people at Sega know why this character is important, it's not for me. It's not because I have a particular love of Amy Rose. I do not. I find her annoying as a character. I think that she's very poorly written and that's why she's annoying. Like It's not her fault necessarily but I feel like she's often overlooked. And because of that, th there's less representation in the Sonic games. And for people like my daughter, who would otherwise be thrilled to engage with these games, when they see that they're not being catered to, they're not going to take it personally necessarily, but they are going to go and look at things or engage with other media where they are represented, such as picking up uh, Disney princess dolls. So what we've been doing instead is whenever she sees me playing Sonic Mania now she'll come over and just kind of start watching and if she feels like sitting down and watching for a long time she'll ask if I can play as Amy instead. And so what I do is I then turn off the PlayStation and I turn on the SNES Classic which has a uh, a couple of ROM hacks on it uh, from Sonic games. Uh, and we'll play that instead and we'll have a very good time doing that except now she's her favorite is sonic 3 uh she likes when angel island zone catches fire and so she wants to play as amy in that and that doesn't seem to run particularly successfully on the snes classic it always seems to crash on me and so when that happens i've then got to turn that off and start playing on my phone instead uh, which is not quite as enjoyable of an experience but at least like she'll come and snuggle up close and watch over my shoulder while i'm playing it on the phone um so yeah, like I know that I've gone on and on about this, but I would love to see Amy included in whatever comes next for Sonic. Not necessarily for my benefit. Let me know, by the way, if you feel like you'd like to hear another video on Amy Rose, because I'd love to do one and get Bretton Stripes to voice it, because she's better at this, obviously, and talk about how uh, Sonic Team of and Sega in general have kind of overlooked and underwritten Amy Rose and made her a bit more of an annoying character and why people dislike her. But uh, I, that, that's definitely a subject for another day. Let me know in the comments if that's something you actually want to watch or if I should just shut up about Sonic and Amy Rose. As one person did say in the comments to uh, the last story video, just shut up about Sonic. Sorry, uh, I like Sonic and I want to keep hammering on about it. So we're here again. But yeah, anyway, there's my little tails. Look, I finished him. Didn't he look cute? Uh, thank you very much for watching. Basically, my review of Sonic Mania, it's great. It just needs a little bit more... Amy. <laughs>